Hey guys, welcome back to Colline Alle Montagne where we talk all about life in Italy and normally we do this with a little wine but today it's too early for wine. So I just have a little bit of water. But today it's not really an exciting topic in the sense that usually we need a little bit of wine because we're going to be talking a lot about Italian bureaucracy and it can drive you crazy and you kind of need something to drink. Instead, today we're going for a little bit of an easy topic that's something especially for those of you who are looking to move to Italy, who have just moved to Italy, maybe you just came over to study. And today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about grocery shopping in Italy. Where do we go? What are all the different stores we go to sometimes? What are kind of like the general rules? How does it work? So let's get into it. In Italy, I feel like there's this idea that sometimes people try to tell you we always go to the fresh markets. That's not exactly true. Okay, if there is a local market, it is really great. I love our market in Torino, Porto Palazzo. It's actually the largest open air market in all of Europe, and it is a great place to go. But honestly, it's a little far away from my home, takes some effort getting there, gotta carry my groceries back. It can be a little bit of work. So honestly, though there are local markets for every single city, every single town, we do go to the supermarket. We are normal people. <laughs> I think that sometimes people try to make it seem like life in Italy is this romantic thing where we're all like buying fresh bread every day. No, honestly, we go to the supermarket like normal people a lot of the times. And at the supermarket, it is a little bit culturally different. You will find some different products than you might be used to in the US, UK, Canada, wherever you're coming from. And I just want to tell you a little bit more about how supermarkets work. Number one, since it's COVID times, you do have to usually get your temperature checked before entering, sanitize, uh, and wear your mask indoors. Just basic rule. Some things you might see that might be a little bit different. When it comes to produce, so vegetables and fruit, you will have to wear one of the plastic gloves that they give you, and you will have to weigh your own produce. You will have to put it into a bag that they'll have. These are biodegradable bags, and you'll have to check the number that's on your, that's on your vegetable, and you'll have to go to one of the weigh stations, weigh it, and put the sticker on it. Normally back home, this was something that they would do automatically at the cashier. So in Italy, it's a little bit different for at least those of us coming from the US. Not sure how it works in other countries, so I'm not sure how about you guys, but, um, but that is one thing that was different and took some getting used to. The other thing about this is there was a law that changed that uh, these biodegradable bags, they actually do charge you, I think it's one cent or two cent per each bag. Um, I actually don't know the exact price because honestly it's so little that I never really think about it. Uh, and it was just a tax to kind of avoid using too many bags. However, honestly, I'm the kind of person who if I buy something, it's just one pepper, I won't throw it in a bag, but I found that they charge you for the bag anyway automatically, so it doesn't even really matter. But that's just one thing when you're buying produce at the supermarket. The other thing a lot of people find weird is the milk and eggs. Okay, in Italy, we have a lot of, we have a lot of fresh milk that's cold in the refrigerator, but we also have a lot of milk that has been um, UHT treated, which means that it can, it can survive outside of the fridge. Um, Honestly, I don't know the science details, never have questioned it. I just kind of went along with it, but you will sort of see aisles and aisles of milk outside of the fridge. Um, this milk tends to last longer while it is still closed, but once you open it, it does last just kind of um, about a week or so like a normal milk. You can check there are different types of milk. For example, obviously we have full fat skim, but you will also find something interesting. You will find goat's milk, um, which I have heard it is very thick. It's quite richer. I did buy it once on accident. It was pretty good, but it wasn't something I would use all the time. In these aisles, you can also find all the plant-based milk, which also is usually sold outside of the fridge. And there you can find any plant-based milk you'd like. You'll also find that certain cooking creams called panna are also usually sold outside of the fridge and bechamel, which is another cream-based product we use for making lasagna. You'll also notice that the eggs are not in the fridge, none of them. No eggs are sold in the fridge in Italy. So <laughs> this is something you might have to get used to. It's something very different that we're not usually used to seeing but it is safe they're safe to eat honestly the egg comes out of the chicken and isn't refrigerated so it can live outside of the fridge 
usually the rule I've heard is that if you put them in the fridge, they should stay in the fridge. If they survive outside of the fridge, you can leave them out of the fridge. These eggs are actually really cool. So you will notice that the eggs you find in Italy usually might have a little bit of dirt on them, might have come with a little feather, uh, and that's not weird. I think that that's actually a really good sign because it means that your eggs did come from a chicken. So <laughs> you should take it as a good sign. Um, I grew up with chickens, so it's something normal to me, but it might put off some people. The other th cool thing about eggs is that they all come with a code like stamped on them. And this code actually tells you from where the egg came. It'll tell you if the chicken who, who laid the egg was grown up uh, free range was grown up in an enclosed pasture, was in, like was laid the egg in a cage in a farm. Like it'll tell you all this detail with this code. Um, and every time you go to buy your eggs, they actually have the description of what all the codes mean. So you can check where your egg came from. And that's just kind of cool if you're trying to be a little bit more conscious of where your food is coming from. So that's about eggs, eggs and milk that you should probably keep in mind when coming to Italy. Another thing that is good to know when you do go to pay for your groceries, you will have to ask for the bags. If you didn't bring your own reusable bags, they're usually not there. You usually have to ask for them. You have to bag your own groceries and each one of these bags does cost a few cents. Um, again, it was a way of turning people off from using too many uh, single use bags so you will have to pay an extra few cents for those or you can bring your own reusable bags but you will have to bag your own groceries either way then if we're still talking about the supermarket something that's really cool about italian supermarkets is that they will always have a fresh bread and salumi and cheese counter where you can go and ask for what salumi cheese or bread you want they'll slice it up for you fresh and you can buy it there i have found that these these counters not only is it a better option because it does save you some plastic normally, normally they wrap things up in paper, but it also ends up being cheaper if you know what you're looking for, you go there or you check out the special offers they have and you can buy directly from them. Um, so I prefer to go directly to the, the counter if I can, rather than just buy the prepackaged salami slices or anything like that, because it also helps save on plastic. So, so I prefer that. You'll find the same for meat, for fish, um, and for a few other things, depends how big your grocery store is. But that's one thing to keep in mind. If you do wanna order from one of those counters, if it's a bigger grocery store, you may find you have to take a number from this little wheel that'll be right next to the counter, take a number and wait for your number to be called in order to order. In terms of quantity, when you're ordering from one of these places, they go by this thing called etto, and etto is 100 grams. How much is that if we want to convert to pounds and all that? Don't know. Don't know math. But I usually find that basically an etto of, if you ask like, oh, I want enough salumi to make sandwiches for two people, they know. They'll give you a good amount. But basically, if you are a two person, um, if you're a couple and you're buying groceries for the week, I would maybe say like due etti, two etto of the of a salami is good usually with cheese you tend to go for like 500 grams like a nice good slice so i honestly still struggle with this usually when i go to the counter i'm like i just want enough like this and i show them an amount and they figure it out for me um but that is just a good thing to keep in mind those are kind of the things you need to know about shopping at the grocery store or the supermarket if you're gonna do your shopping there but the next thing I want to tell you guys a little bit more about is where you can do your shopping in Italy because obviously we talked a lot about the supermarket but there are, as I mentioned, a bunch of different markets that you can go to plus a bunch of different little shops, some online options. You've got a lot, you've got a lot of options here in Italy. So number one, the supermarket is pretty much just where we go averagely because it does tend to be the closest thing. It's always open. It just makes sense. But if you have time and if you know when to go, every single town does have their own open air market, which can be a great option if you are looking for some more local produce, looking for seasonal stuff. This is a great option. I do love our local market. I love it a lot, but it just so happens that it's only in the mornings on like Friday and Tuesday where are days that I work. So I can't really make it. There are some kind of myths about markets though that I do wanna share with you guys. So one number one is that a lot of people think that markets are cheaper 
This is not always true. Sometimes, especially if it's local produce, organic produce, it can cost more. So you kind of need to compare and check it out. Another is that it'll always be local, fresh, in-season, organic vegetables and fruit. That's also not true. Some places, for example, in Porto Palazzo in Turin, in one section, it is actually imported fruits and vegetables. And these come from a big distributor that brings the same fruit and vegetables that go to the supermarkets. Um, and these market sellers also buy from them and sell at the market. These, in this case, it isn't local. It isn't always even from Italy. And you can't know unless you ask. And even then, it depends if they want to tell you. So if you're trying to eat local, uh, that might not be the best option. But I will say, if that's not something that really you care about, well, these guys tend to sell their fruits and vegetables for a lot cheaper than the supermarket. So that's a good way to save money. You, If you are trying to be really conscious of eating organically, eating local, this kind of stuff, you can take a little search for two types of markets, Colderetti or Campagna Mica. You can check these out because both of them will have bright yellow tents. That's usually their kind of symbol. And you can search online for the closest market to you. These will always be an organization of local farmers who are selling their produce and you can find some really great stuff through them. But let's say you don't really have time to go to the market, but you do want to be really conscious of what you're eating. There are also two other options that involve shopping online. So one is La Viare Che Dice Si. Basically, you can order online. So there will be a person in your town who decides which producers from all around Italy are going to be for sale, uh, who are going to distribute that that week. You can order from them online, make your kind of box, and then once a week go to this person and pick up your box. And you can also, usually when you go to pick it up, a lot of the producers swing by, you can meet them, you can have a little aperitivo. Like it's kind of like an event, but also you could just pick up your groceries and go. So this can be really fun. We did it a few times when we were living in a different town um, because it was right next door and it was really fun. However, where we live now, there's not somebody doing it who's very close and it takes a lot of time to go to the town, find this stuff. It just became too much of an issue. Instead, you can also look into the site Cortina and this can also connect you with, with some Italian farmers and you can learn more about the producer when you're ordering your food. So this is also a great way if you wanna be a little bit more conscious about what you're eating. The other option that you have is also to wander around your local town and get to know the different specialized stores. Something that I love about living in Italy is that you can go to very different stores, very specialized areas that are specifically for meat or specifically for bread or specifically for whatever. And you can kind of talk with the owner and they'll give you a bunch of advice on the best products. This of course does mean a little bit of time because you do need to kind of walk around, go to one store, go to the other, but it's pretty fun. So here are the different stores that you might come across in Italy. One is your typical panificio, so a bakery. And this bakery might be a little bit different than the ones you're used to in the US or wherever you're coming from, and like different than the ones in France also. Because bakeries here, panificio, usually if it's called a panificio, it really specializes in bread. So like savory, leavened products. And they might have bread, they might have pizza, focaccia, these type of things. You might find a sweet or two, like maybe like a brioche or something, but usually it'll be more savory. In the case of sweet things, if you're looking for some yummy cakes for a special event, if you want to get a little pastoncini, those little delicious like tarts, uh, if you want to pick up any of those, you're going to want to go to a pasticceria. And a pasticceria is a uh, expert of sweets, all things sweet and sugary. So this is my favorite place to go and <laughs> you can find a lot of great stuff here. Also, sometimes the pasticceria doubles as a cafe so you can have a coffee and a fresh baked cornetto there and it's a really great experience. Instead, if you're looking for fresh pasta, you might want to go to the pastificio where you will find fresh pasta both filled or just like the dried typical pasta like tagliatelle, anything and everything you can find there. Instead, moving away from carbs, you can also go to a macelleria, a butcher shop, to get fresh meat. Here, you can find really any meat you need. Also, for you Americans, if it comes time for Thanksgiving, go to your local macelleria and ask for a turkey and they probably can get you one. Here, they will sell meat just 
as is, like different cuts, or they might sell some meats prepared and already seasoned so that all you have to do is go home, throw it in the oven, and it's good to go. The Macheleria is also a great place if you are looking for inspiration for recipes. Go ahead there, grab whatever meat you want, and ask the Macheleria, the butcher, what he would recommend to prepare it with, and he'll always have a recipe on hand. He's He's a pro. Then the other place that you might end up going is a gastronomia, which in Piedmont, these are my favorite places ever. So a gastronomia is usually a place where stuff is already pre-prepared. So it could be antipasti, it could be some primi, some secondi, desserts. Everything is already cooked for you. It just needs to be heated up. And this is kind of our favorite place to go for an alternative date night. Instead of going to a restaurant, sitting down with people, traveling, and like spending money at a restaurant, we tend to save a little, grab some stuff from a gastronomia, really fancy stuff, come home, warm it up, and have kind of an at-home date night. Especially in Piedmont, this is great because we have so many good antipasti, such as like vitello tonato, insalata russa, acciughe al verde, and all of these things we can get from the gastronomia. So this is also a great place if you need like a quick lunch, it could be an option there. You'll also of course see places that are specific for fruit and vegetables, you'll see places that are specific for fish. You can really find anything and everything and there's always going to be a different store. So if you have time on your hand, it can be really fun and be a really great way to get to know people in your neighborhood, going from store to store, having a little chat, buying your products there. So it can be fun if you have time, go for it, try it out and let me know which of these ways you guys normally do your grocery shopping and what you think and i hope it helps you get settled in italy